Hey, hey, hey! <laughs> Thanks so much for uh, stopping by, guys. Uh, this is uh, your buddy Telex here for another Tasty Tuesday. And uh, yeah, I kind of uh, wanted to close out the old uh, Game of Thrones series. So we finished up doing looking at the Cardu uh, Gold Reserve earlier. With uh, Malt tonight, we're going to be looking at a couple things, which I'm excited about. Put that one for later. The first thing we're going to take a look at, and, and feel free to check out the Cardu Gold Reserve um, Game of Thrones uh, short review I just did uh, on the side uh, earlier. So I usually keep them underneath 10 minutes if I can. Um, so that's that's there for availability on the side. But uh, we'll be looking at, um, sorry, a little nap in my face, uh, a Ball Blair 1990 second release. 46% ABV, uh, natural color, and non-chill filtered, man. That sounds like a winner to me. I don't know about you guys, but I'm excited, and I already poured some earlier. I'm kind of keeping that separate, as well as uh, I'll be looking at this uh, with the uh, malt. The Glen Scotia Single Cask, uh, infamous hand-filled 10-year-old, 56.3% distillery bottling, Um I think he wrote pear to sherry. Maybe it's something to sherry. Is that port or peat? Oh, peat and sherried. I think it's peat and sherried, actually. Sorry about that. <laughs> Couldn't read his writing for a second, but um, I have not touched that yet. I haven't even sampled it at all. It'll be a complete blind, not blind, but a complete new experience live on air to see if, if it's as bad or tainted or uh if it's funky or or what we might find in it we'll see <laughs> but um we'll we'll first look at the ball blair and uh go from there what have you guys uh what are you guys drinking tonight i'm just curious uh hopefully something good doing well there daniel uh i appreciate it you'll be doing a lot better when you move on to another pour yes yes yeah, the uh, the first one was uh, is okay. I mean, the Cardu is one of those where, you know, <laughs> it's hard to find a good Cardu. I hate to say that, but I've had the the this one. I've had the twelve. I've had the eighteen even. And um, after I had the eighteen, I was not gung ho about buying a bottle of that right away. I know they have a limited release twenty one. I, I, sadly, I think it was only released like one year in like 2014 or some craziness. So finding that and it not costing an arm and a leg is probably going to be uh, a, quite a task. But you know, we'll, we'll see how it goes. The uh, the profile is usually pretty cereal slash uh, malt. E even for me, I like malted barley, but it when it's like the most prevalent note. And it's got a little bit of spice, a little bit of fruit, and that's about what you get. That's when I'm kind of like, meh, you know, I need, I need a little something else. But I'm like 10 at the moment and letting uh, some Joseph Magnus sit for a while. Now, I'm familiar definitely with the Benoit 10. Are you talking about the basic non-peated or are you talking about the curiositas? I'm just, I'm just curious uh, which one on that deal. Hey, Slanchava there, uh, Ben. Good to see you as always. Tastes not like nothing but cherry and oak to me. Old Forester 1910 reminders. Are you talking about the Benrayak 10 or something else? And when you said the Magnus, uh, Joseph Magnus, what what is that? I don't think you're talking about Holland Park Magnus. It's the only Magnus I know. Uh, maybe you're referring to some uh, bourbon or something there. Diageo released a 14-year cast cardio cast strength sold out before I could grab it. Yeah, I remember seeing that not too long ago, where they had like some specialized releases. They had like a Craig and Moore special bottle, and I think it might have been some. I think it was a 12-year as well, but it, it was like a souped-up version, like a, a cast strength or something. Um, those would be interesting to to grab just to try, but shelling out over a hundred dollars for a bottle it's like i don't know about that heavy on the malt yes it is trooper really good to see you man it's been a while and uh how are the uh things in uh, louisiana i hope it get getting better hopefully you're not stuck on an oil rig if you are uh, hopefully you got some good scotch there with you yeah andrew page good to see you as well as uh meister 
Um, I'll just end it ready for some more to uh, Tuesday talk. That sounds great to me. Non peated, the basic, uh, the basic tin, yeah. I like the basic tin non peated, and I like the peated too. The Curiositas is actually a decent peated whiskey if you like Ben Ryak. I'd say give it a try if you haven't already. Um, but the, the the basic tin is actually one of the the nicer. Uh, I think it's a space side, right? If I'm, if I'm going by memory, is that a space side? I'm trying to to cheat and look at the bottle. I can't see it from here, but if it is not a space side, it definitely tastes like a typical space side. We'll put it that way. Nice, uh, nice fruitiness. Joseph Magnus bourbon tastes like that. Gotcha. Huh. Okay. Snick snack. It's a snack. Good to see you, man. As always. I did get the, the Kragenmore 12P to cast strength in the Talos for 15. Oh, you're lucky on that 15 cast strength. I would love to get my hands on a bottle of that uh, Talisker 15 cast strength. I'd like to try the Kragenmore 12 uh, PD cast strength. I don't know if I would buy a bottle, but uh, uh, what did you think of it, Peter, on both sides? Did you like um, did you like the Kragenmore more than the Talisker, or did the Talisker more? And was how did you, what did you think of the Kragenmore Pete? Was it um, effective as far as being good, or was it like too tangy. I mean, there's certain peats out there that are like the Tom and Tool PD Tang is a little too tangy for me. I, I did not enjoy that one very much. Um, there's some others that are touch and go. Like Anox got some good peat, like the Cutter, and not so good peat like the Flouter. That's just my opinion as far as subjective good peat versus bad, but the typical base space out on the Benrock, yeah. I really want that Talisker too. The 57 North was great. Yeah, it might be an NAS, but it, it's still solid and a solid offering, I'd say. That's just my opinion of it. And uh, yeah, he's asking where you were from there, Daniel. And we've got a little visitor here. <laughs> Big visitor. <laughs> How's it going, man? Tasty Tuesday. Tell it's the whiskey tech. What is up, my friend? When I when your when your uh, ball player came, I was very happy. <laughs> oh man, did it leak? No, no, I already, I already, I already poured a little bit to let okay. it sit out earlier. <laughs> I was like, my God, I don't want you to miss a drop of this. I like making you. I like keeping you on your toes, making you kind of like <laughs> on the ready. <laughs> I appreciate that. Um, let me get a little bit in the glass and let sure. it uh, settle down for a sec, and uh, we can get into it. Um, yeah, I'll chat to you a little bit about the short review. I, I wanted to just finish up the whole Game of Thrones series that I was kind of going through before. So I sat down with the Cardew Gold Reserve, uh, which is the last bottle I had to go through in that. It was a 3.25 out of 5. You know, nothing off-putting, a nice, typical sweet dram if you want something out of the box that's not a... A Johnny Walker or a you know something like a typical Magnus from uh, Holland Park. It's a good you know option, but sure. more than forty bucks, I would say no. Forty is about the high end on a bottle like that. <laughs> I have not really had any Cardew. I mean, I know that that's used a lot. Yeah, like you said, the Johnny Walker blends stuff like that, but never had a straight up Cardew. Is that the? Uh, are you at the end of the line on your Glen, uh, uh, Game of Thrones? Reviews, yeah, I've done pretty much all of them with, uh, I mean, I, I, the first ones I did were like the Lagavulin and the Talisker was like the first two bottles, and mm -hmm. I did like those. And then when I went to like the um, the Dalwini and the Oban, the Kleinleash and some others, they were still pretty good. But like the ones I would skip are like the Royal Lochnagar, the, the Cardew I'm on the fence about, and the uh, Glendulin. Um, the other, and the, the Mortlock was a good bottle at first. It's just unless you drink it really fast, it did not do well with oxidation. So I would even skip the Mortlock bottle after I went through, you know, all that. Yeah. But the, um, the, you know, overall, it's a, this one is, is better than the Cardu 12, uh, surprisingly, even for an NAS, in my opinion. Because like you said, the, the Cardus are, 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 generally just kind of like a bland Johnny Walker that there's not a whole lot going on other than like a really a, a boatload of malted barley cereal type of notes usually. And that's, mm -hmm. that's I never, the Cardi is one of my least favorite distilleries. So don't feel like you're missing out on a lot if you haven't had any of their stuff. Yeah, no, I have not. But um, 
you know, it's always good to try stuff. I'd be curious, you know, now that you've went through almost the entire line, like what is your, I know you mentioned there's a few you like, what is, what's the one that you think would stand out from that? The stand, yeah, the stand out would definitely be between the Lagavulin 9, the Klein Leash being cast strength, and maybe the, um, hmm. Those are definitely the, the the top two, I would say. The other ones are, you know, either three and a half to three point seven. I'm sorry, yeah, like three and a half stars down to like the the Royal Lotnagar and the Cardu and the uh, Mortlocks are like, you know, after oxidation, I'd say three three point two five max. So I would just skip them if you could. You what know? was the score you think you'd give that Lagavulin? Oh, that Lagavulin 9, I actually enjoyed that one. It, it, that one gets yeah, mixed reviews, um, but thankfully more are pro than against. It's not as good as, as the 16. Um, well, yeah, yeah. It's, what do you, you think know, compared to the 8? Now, the 8 had a higher ABV, but... Yeah, yeah the 8 is, is more one-dimensional to me, straightforward Pete. I like a little bit of a sherry or, or influence of the cask with it. That's mm -hmm. why I like the 9. The 9 is definitely more sherry-driven. So I would, I, would, I would put it up against the 8, you know, for people to, to yeah. compare. I think it's, it's, it's a quality dram as far as, you know, the 8 and 9. But for me personally, I would rather get the 16 or the, or the distiller's edition, you know. Yeah. Oh, right. Yeah. I, I'm with you on that. Um, I don't remember what the price. I, I never bought a bottle. I did get an opportunity to. Uh, I got the opportunity to do a tasting of like a flight. You could. They had almost all of them, with the exception of the Mortlock. They had a bunch of them, but you got to try a bunch and everything like that. And uh, the Lagavulin, I thought was impressive. The Talisker wasn't bad either. Um, yeah, Talisker was. I mean, it's not like a typical Talisker with the Maritime. The Klein, yeah, the Klein Leash, as you mentioned, was good. I think I had the Dalwini too, which was okay. Going. The, the Talisker I thought was interesting because it's like a lot like a sugar cookie, and Talisker usually doesn't do that kind of dram. It was definitely mm -hmm. different outside of their profile, which I appreciated. The problem with stuff like this, and and even the the Dalwini, and uh, I think is another one where they're just re-releases of what they've already had out in the UK. Like this Gold Reserve has oh, actually been okay. Yeah, it's actually been available in the UK for quite some time, and and they just you know, package it for the U S and this packaging is really the only difference. Sure. Sure. Right on. But you know, so, yeah, before we get into the bobbler, uh, anything new on your this week? Yeah. I'm excited for you, man. I think you're, this is a real treat. Anything, anything new in the, uh, in the, in the telex den this week? Yeah, we, um, Malt and I have have gone in and, and we're trying to time our, our purchases where we can do the same thing. And thankfully, both of us have the new car just coming, the 2020 red wine cast. I can't wait. Oh, it should yeah. get here Friday, but I don't know if it's going to be that quick. I don't know how long I'm going to be able to hold you off on that. I, mine might be a little bit longer than that. But, That's uh, okay. It's not. It's not a rush. But <laughs> as soon as you do get it, let me know because we need. We do need to do a review because no one's oh, done that one yet. For sure. For sure. <laughs> no doubt. I, I. It's. I've been thinking about buying this whiskey for months now. So. I was excited to find it. I couldn't believe I could find it already. But you do have to get it overseas. Um, and the Tamdu 15. I was able to find Ooh, that nice. one. So nice. we should take a look at that one if you want to on the side. It's yeah, okay. definitely, definitely. So you got some good new things. Um, I've gotten a few too. Um, I got a couple bourbons. I've got the as I was mentioning on my show. I got the latest Elijah Craig Barrel Proof. I'm gonna have to send you some of this. We're gonna the next batch I send you is gonna include some bourbons, man, because there's just some stuff you got to try. Uh, I got that one. I've also got the new Wild Turkey Rare Breed, which is a barrel proof, but this is a rare breed rye. This is their barrel proof rye. Hmm. Uh, really solid. I got a review coming out on that on Friday. Um, I've really enjoyed it. I got a couple scotches too. Stuff you might be interested in. Picking up on where you were last week with the Aaron 21, I have a bottle of the Aaron. This is the quarter cask of the Bothy. Nice. This is 56.2% uh, non chill natural. Did you say 56.2? 56.2. Uh, Ooh. And take a look at this natural color. Now, of course, there's no age statement on this, but take a look at that. That's beautiful. You know, what, what's interesting is that Aaron has another new release uh, that's a lot like that one. It's called, I think, the Bodega. Does that sound familiar? It does sound right. Yeah. And, and, we're talking about. 
I've been hearing rave reviews on the Bodega cast being like this, you know, new great whiskey. So hopefully this Bothy Ooh. will, hopefully the Bothy will, you know, be a complimentary nice one along with it. If we're yeah, lucky. definitely. Definitely. I have to keep my eyes up for that. Uh, one other thing that I got, which I know I'm going to have to get a sample for you. Oh, Bothy yeah. 12, 2019 special release cast strength. I don't. Okay. So here's a question that I have. So obviously this is in a very different bottle than the characteristic distillers editions are. Yeah. Is this the new distillers edition labeling as far as you know, or is this an actual special release independent of the distillers? It's, it's a, it's a special release, but it is the same type of juice that you're used to getting from right. the Lock of one twelve. Like I've got a couple bottles of the, uh, the, the typical look of the old, you know, yeah, wow. right. but that one, I think it is the same series that they did a new, uh, we were just talking before you joined with, uh, Peter White was talking about, he picked up a Cragenmore cast strength. Sure. And he picked up the, uh, the Talisker 15. I think it was a, another cast strength whiskey. And it's the same series that, that, that floral looking bottles in. It's almost like a Florin Fauna type of series, it seems like, but it's 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 I, I don't I think it's multiple years. I think they're just doing it for this one year, if I'm not mistaken. Oh interesting. So do you think there might be a chance that they do a distillers edition Lagavulin twelve? Or do you think it's this is just going to be the replacement for it this year or something? I think that's just a replacement for this year, but don't quote me on that. That is a good question. I never I either. I saw, um, I don't know if you've been looking at Ralphie's reviews as of late. He, he, he reviewed this a few weeks ago and was very high praises, which, look, the Lagavulin 12 Distillers Edition, or I'm sorry, I keep saying Distillers Edition, Cast Strength. Cast Strength, yeah. Fantastic stuff. Uh, almost no matter what, you, what release you get. Uh, but he was singing the high praise of this. Conversely, he also had a lot of high praise for the uh, recently, his last review, which is the Glenn Park was 25, which I was like, he gave like an 89, uh, which I was, I was like, whoa, 89. <laughs> that's, that's a little intense. But yeah. he's a homer for Glenn Farkless, I think, in part because of his like, the way they do things more than the way. I, I, he likes the way they do things. And I'm not going to, you know, I'm, who am I to judge Ralphie's taste? But like, I'll be honest with you, Glenn Farkless 25 is a disappointment to me. Boring. <laughs> yeah, I, I think it also depends on what you have right before it. Because, like, certain times I'll be sitting down to have a whiskey like that. And if it's my first one out of the gate, I think the experience is a lot different than if it's like your second or third dream of the evening. So, with that said, it does seem to be a little light in the pants for a 25, if you know what I mean. Yeah, it just it, it lacks a certain, it, it seems very dull and tired <laughs> to yeah. me. I mean, it's not bad, but like, and you know, you're getting a 25 year old whiskey for 150, $170. Yeah. Uh, the, the price is awesome. But yeah, I mean, if you're going to get a 25 year old, that was my first 25 year old whiskey. And so it set a bar. And then I remember having like a Glendronic 18 hour dice. And I was like, Whoa, this is incredibly better. <laughs> like, <what's laughs> the Glen Farm? I've got a really dumb question for you. Okay. You ready? Yeah. Anoch 24 versus the Glenn Farkless 25. <laughs> oh, Anoch 24, and it's not even a question. I, yeah, Anoch 24. I told you it was dumb. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I was going to give you a dumb answer, but I got too excited when you said Anoch 24. I had a feeling. When you say that, I want to drink more of it. And that goes to show that price is not always where it's at, because that's a good, well-priced, it's a very well-priced dram, and it's still damn good comparatively. It's, it's to that one. what you pay for, you know? Yeah, the Glenn Farkless 25, I think I liked it a little better than you might have liked it, but I don't think it. I appreciate it as much now because we have had so many better whiskeys, you know, over time. Yeah. I think it's, that that is one of those things that you have to gauge, too, is like if you taste the 25 in your first year or two of your whiskey journey, you're probably going to give it a much better score and experience than you would after three or four years. But with Ralphie, yeah. it's like he's definitely been around the block a few times. Uh, so I am surprised. But yeah, I was thinking he was going to be more in the 85 range. I was like, Man. yeah, I would say. 85 86 if i was doing the 100 point scale would probably yeah. be a little more in my feeling but i think if i was doing the 100 point scale it's 80 83 ish 
I, I can't knock you for that because it, it does have its shortcomings, in my opinion. But well, let's move on to something that doesn't have shortcomings. My yeah. <laughs> well, you, let's, uh... let's set the table here. Um, as Telex mentioned, uh, we we've got a bunch of samples in each other's hands. So each week we're going to do our best to taste something live at the same time uh, to give you all a uh, you know sense of. Our notes, uh, chat about the same whiskey, you know, taking our show to a little bit to the next level. Um, so this week, uh, Telex is, is swirling in his glass right now and oh, ferociously. About a nosegasm. <laughs> 1990, second release. This is a 25 year old single malt scotch. Um, this is before Ball Blair moved to their age statement stuff in the last year or so, which too much to reason. Um, you got to help, help me out. My, my clean clearance fogging up on me, man. <laughs> <laughs> um, they used to come in these kind of funky <sighs> boxes, which is so cool. Uh, this is what the bottle, uh, the box looks like. There's no bottle in, which I'll show you in a second. A um, lot of, lot of flannel about what they, about their distillery, but the specs on this non-chill filtered natural color, 46%. This is 23 years in a bourbon cask followed by two years in two uh, Oloroso sherry casks. Um, the bottle itself, for color and appreciation of the style of their bottle. Oh, it's beautiful. beautiful. That is some color there, buddy. And that's no joke. <laughs> yeah. um, and so Telex and I have been bantering back and forth about this for some time. Um, so this one, okay, so just so you're clear. This one says distilled 1990, bottled 2016. So it's possible this is upwards of 26 years, but it's likely to 25. Um, it is wow. the second release. And those are the specs, 46% non-chill natural. And so, stick, and stick around because I am going to take a look at that Glen Scotia with the uh, malt here later oh, toward the end of the show. Big reveal. <laughs> yeah, toward the end of the show. I want to keep uh -oh. hanging for a while. <laughs> Stay tuned, y'all. It's going to happen. <laughs> Telex is going to give us his opinion. Uh, I was hinting at this a little bit earlier tonight uh, as I've entered week 13 and that. So you let me know. I will uh, set the table for that before we dive in. Um, but uh, oh, how about man. we get into this bobbler, my friend? The nose is to die for. <laughs> I'd be curious. You, why don't you uh, go first on the nose, and then uh, I'll follow, and we can kind of go back and forth. And then I'd love to hear. You know, at the end, we'll uh, give your uh, preliminary score. Yeah, I'll, we'll we'll do it in sections. We'll just do nose. Uh, I'll do a nose. You do a nose. We'll do a. I'll do a palate. You do a palate, kind of thing, and we'll do it that way if that's cool. Yep, twenty-three year bourbon, two years Oloroso cast. It's amazing. The f the the first note is definitely fruit off the top, and I'm not complaining. I mean, it's, but it's not. We're not talking like dull fruit cocktail crap. We're talking like a real fruit cocktail, like like some you know a few like like a think of a, a really nice rich couple that got together to have a big a big party, and they have all the good fruit out on the table. <laughs> Like you walked into a high-end fruit, you know, you're in the whole food fruit section. <laughs> there you go. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh man, you could definitely get the sherry, even though it's only a couple of years. I really definitely, I and mean, I'm sure that some of the fruit comes from the bourbon too. But mm -hmm. and you really get some nice old school, like almost like a leather. Um, mm. I, I'm assuming that comes from the refinement of of it. Little, some nice spices, a little bit of, um, oh man, it's almost like a red velvet, like um, a ro I'm getting like a rose, almost like a floral. Yeah, I was just about to ask you if you're picking up any floral on this. There is a floral note to this that I picked up. Mm. It's deep. This is one, it's funny because I, I was lucky enough, um, courtesy of, uh, of one of our regulars to have the ball Blair 1983, which is the oh. one that's a little bit older than this one, but this is on par, man. This one is like right there with it. As far as quality, it's insane. All the vintage here. I never had a bad vintage bottle. Like the, even the 2005 bottle was exceptional. I thought for what you were getting, you know what I mean? The 99 yeah. was the one I bought for myself, but I was lucky enough to have an 05, um, this one and the 83, but this one I haven't had before. 
Yeah. And so for me on the nose, a lot of similarities. It's like a complex kind of Christmas cake thing. I get a lot of the spice you mentioned, which is the, for me, it's like slight clove cinnamon, which I think is coming off that bourbon cask. Oh yeah. The thing that the, the, the other dimensions, it's like dry fruit and dark juicy fruits. So I'm thinking plum. I also get bright red fruits, which is strawberry. Oh yeah. Strawberry, red apple, there's a vanilla cream thing going. There's a lemon meringue. There's like that sharpness. I don't know if you get that, but there's this sharp tartness that comes right in the end of the nose, which slightly floral, but it's like it's like lemon dessert. To me, there's like some even even some basil herbal thing going on that I think I'm yeah. getting off that. Okay, I can totally hear you on that. I mean, it's, for me, it's a little bit more on the grassy side, but yeah. I think yeah, herbal generically, yes. The leather. Totally there. I mean, the like fennel is... seed almost. Oh, interesting. That's interesting. I actually, hmm, I didn't quite think about that. But yeah, what a nose, hey? I mean, you, four or five dimensions. You nailed it with the the plums and the strawberries and the the the. It's it's funny because yeah, it's like you get the the ruby richness, but you also get like lots of nice. What I would consider like mid-range berries with it, like the raspberry, strawberry thing. Yeah, yeah. You get some black currants and some really deep fruits in there too. Exactly, man. It's like juicy dark fruits, juicy bright red fruits. Exactly. Gosh. <laughs> I'd be curious if you also get a slight pepperiness to it, or not? Pe you know, pear and pepper. Pear and pepper is a good way to put it. It's like slight melon, like the pear, kind of that mealy, rounded, generic sweetness of fruit. And then a little bite, just like a little bit of a almost salty pepper bite. Yeah, I would, I would almost call it like a white pepper on the on the okay on the nose. Yeah. But yeah, I know, I know exactly what you're talking about. There's a little there's a little brisk effervescence on it. Down the hatch. Oh yeah, <laughs> I thought you'd never ask. Welcome, <laughs> my friend. Salancha, I mean, this is this is awesome. I, I'm so so surprised I never had this before. Mm. Oh wow! Mm. That is heaven in a in a in a sip. <laughs> wow! Oh, mm. that is good. The fruits keep coming too, big time. And it goes for a while too. It's got a nice finish. I feel like the viscosity on it is medium, but somehow it's very full flavor. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, it's it's. I would definitely would not call it thin. It's definitely. It might not be heavy, but it's definitely above. I'd say between medium and heavy. Yeah. For me, it's like again the bright red fruit, dark fruits, just like playing off of each other. I also get a hint of root beer and cola. Mm-hmm. And this is funny because this is the same similar note that I was getting off that Lafroig 15 that you weren't getting before. But I, I was getting that kind of a, a cola almost note. But I think it depends on the batches because I had 15s that had it and, and Lafroig 15s that didn't have it. So that might be part of it too. Yeah. This definitely has that cola note that you're talking about though. Curious if you pick up any tropical fruit. Chocolate too. Um, maybe like a pineapple uh, with it. Uh, but definitely some dark chocolate was, was, was as soon as you asked me about the fruit, I was getting the dark chocolate on it. <laughs> you could tell it's complex just out of the gate because you're getting all these notes that are not just in one arena, it's all over the place, but in a good way. Yeah. Do you get any of the pepper, a little bit of that? I'm not sure if it, I mean, you're better on the pepper distinguishing white and black, but. There's also like the chili pepper. Do you get a mm. bite of that? For me, as yeah. it develops, it's like it's like dark cherry with a bit of pepper, and then there's that leatheriness, toffee, toffee leather thing, which is very bourbon. Oh yeah, the the definitely the 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 spice level was different. On there was definitely a white pepper on the nose. The the palate, I was uh, thinking, is it black pepper? And it's not. But I think you nailed it with the the like a red chili like a, a cayenne pepper. Yeah, it's like a little bit of a like 
powdery grainy like well, not grainy but like a kind of like a, a assertive spice man i can't believe how I mean, if you go back to the nose the nose has got such a such a depth to it it's 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 one of the best noses i've ever had i'll be honest with you it's fantastic and it keeps changing now it's getting more of a citrus type of thing going on with more oranges and lemons and how did the uh how did the finish land for you it's good let me give another another little sip here you would do it yeah definitely medium i'd say on the mouth coat yeah spice is definitely getting the more you drink it the more spicier it seems to get not in a bad way but it does have like a a bit of a, a cayenne pepper kick it's still going and it's I'm trying to think how to describe the finish mm. is there's no bitterness there's no minerality going on it's definitely like half spice mm. it kind of reminds me of like Remember that gum that used to come with stripes? <laughs> the yeah, first. Like kind of like a spearmint thing? <sighs> Partially. There is a little bit of a menthol kind of a note, but it's more of like the fruit stripe gum. Did you ever remember seeing oh, that? Like, ju- like kind of like juicy fruit gum. I, I know I know where you're going. Yeah. It's like, it's very juicy. It's very like, and I don't say this in a bad way, but it's almost like a, an artificially fruit sweet. But a good quality, like a good quality, yeah, in a good way, yeah, like a like a like a saltwater taffy kind of a thing. There it's, you go, there you go. It's it's definitely got a saltwater taffy type of a finish with like definitely, and then the white pepper comes back on the finish. It's more of a not a not on the on the the initial palate. It's a dark spice, but over time it gets to be like brighter somehow. Mm. Yeah. The, the finish for me, it was, again, it just comes in waves. It was, there was a, a honey and a vanilla thing going. Then it was like a juicy plum and then honeydew melon. And then it's maple syrup. Mm, wow. Yeah. And then to close it out, salted caramel, slight sweet spearmint. The spearmint, yeah, that, that's that's another note that that is funny. It's it's amazing, like when people say certain terms and you're experiencing something, oh, yeah, and it's just, it just comes in your head like that, and you definitely know know the spearmint on the, on the oh, side. And what was that like that the oh god the nose the that prune note? I mean, I am not a prune fan, but it is and it's like dark raisin prune, chocolate covered raisin. What a whiskey. Yeah, I'm, I'm trying. I was trying to determine what's my favorite aspect—the nose, the palate, or the finish—and and I'm gonna. I'm not gonna taint it per se, but I might put one drop just to see. Do it. What I get. Yeah, definitely do it. As I got, I saved. A, I didn't pour it all. I just poured a little bit just to be able to play a little bit with it uh, to see if there's any difference, but. I'm going to put a little more in my glass, and I'm also going to put a drop on it. I hear you there. The, um, yeah, it's like, I definitely, I think the nose is going to be my favorite up front. But I tell you what, the palette and the finish are not far behind at all. It's like, it's like five stars in the nose, four and a half on the palette, and four and a half on the finish. <laughs> see if uh it's funny man it changes so fast even with water uh, you know, most whiskey it's amazing yeah. even like one drop can make it change so fast yep i mean i will say like with the water i get a little bit more of a lime there's a lime thing going through the, the taste and the finish i mean i will say for the record i mean this is not a fresh bottle i mean this is oxidized for close to probably five to six months before i gassed it like this That's is not bad at all though bottle that's not bad at all for uh, if you said like five years, then I'd be like, oh well, that would be. But yeah, if, if you six months and you also you add a gas, it's, it's pretty much as fresh as I think you're gonna mm-hmm. be able to get. But man, yeah, it, it not that lime note is there, and also get like a lot of the the caramel butterscotch, the 
those bourbon notes. The man. vanilla and all that are coming up to the forefront of the nose after the drop or two of water, which is really nice, actually. I still get some fruit, but it's definitely more uh, becoming more of the bourbon notes are coming up front, like Agreed. you said. Yeah, totally agree with you on that. That's amazing. <laughs> yep. Has anybody else had this one? And uh, looks like Steven's a big fan as well. I know Steven's probably got three or four bottles of this stuff in his house. He's a lucky man. Mm. What a great bird. Well, oh, what you great. know what? Now, remember when we were talking about the initial the initial uh, finish and you were talking about the salted caramel? Yeah. To me, man, after a drop of water, this that's all day on the palate, man. The salted caramel is like the first note I got. Yeah. But in a good way, like like totally, like a, totally. I get like, it. It's like caramel, but it's got this like sharp edge to it. You know, it's like got a, some vanilla. Like tough. it's almost like having an ice cream with with like yeah. caramel and pretzels in like vanilla ice cream. It's yeah, wow. yeah, 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 totally, totally. Yeah, that salty, that salt, that like very characteristic pretzel salt. Mm. Mm. I'm trying to think if it changes the. Hmm. It definitely changes it, but it doesn't change it in a bad way. It just makes it a, a bit different. Yep, I agree. Finish is still there. It it doesn't make it dry, thankfully, because sometimes it dries things out. This is not a dry whiskey. Like you get, you get the leather, you get the like cinnamon, which are very kind of drying notes. But I'm telling you, there's like, it's like you feel them going through the development of this, but they're so rounded by these juicy just like fruits and a slight herbal the like maple syrup caramel creaminess that like it forces that dryness to play harmoniously in a way that like in certain whiskeys the dryness would be the only thing in town like it brings a level of complexity i think with the finish with the water i think it actually adds a more spice mm. even on the finish it believe it or not mm. But it, it's okay. definitely not a dark spice. It's more of a light spice. Like it's got the white pepper with like some. Um... Like, like you were talking about the cinnamon, like a clove type of thing. I think it even enhances it on the finish after a drop of water, which is really weird that it happens. But it happens a lot with the whiskey, I've noticed. Yeah, this is de this is definitely a. I think your point with the water, like the bourbon characteristics of this, that 23 years and ex bourbon really shines with water. But without the water, I feel like the sherry's loud. Exactly. Yeah. Wow. It's this, the makings, the, the, the way you know you've got a really good dram is if it does this type of thing where you've got a profile that you love before the drop and a profile that you like equally as much, if not better. Than the original with the you know with and without a drop and the tremendous change that the complexity is still there, but it doesn't lack the oomph. A lot of times you might get different notes, but it lessens the the oomphness of Man, what you're yeah. getting. You're so totally right. Yeah. What's so interesting now? Like I'm going back to the nose now. This is like after a couple zips and a second pour. It's like now I'm getting more of a like. Mango, not mango, but like a toned down mango apricot, maybe apricot and, and sawdust. Yeah, like the dry anise, the dry fruits and the sawdust are coming in. So well, they just play together so well. It's it's something else. Oh, man, uh, if I ever throw the money down and get a new bobbler bottle like the eighteen or the, uh, they have a, an eighteen. Do they have a twenty one? I think they have a twenty five. Hmm. Maybe <laughs> it's 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 such a gamble that has anyone had has anyone had the uh, new twenty five in this old nineteen ninety and how do they compare? I'm, I'm hoping some of you guys, one of you has has partaked in the new bottle air. I'm just wondering how it stacks up at all with these vintage bottles because these vintage bottles are outstanding. So if you were going to put a preliminary score on this one, my friend, what would uh, where would you fall? Wow, mm. I tell you what, it's it's man, I 
I'd say this is definitely a, I'd say a 4.75. I'd say there's not really much you can knock it for. And, it, and it, I gave the same score to the 83 because, I mean, the only thing that you could really change that might, and I use might, you know, with quotes to make this better is maybe a higher ABV, but that's the only thing that you right. can really, right, you know, right. change. It's got a great ear. It's, it's not colored. It's not chill filtered. It's, it's a great distillery, you know, historically, um, they, they've never stirred me wrong with their vintage releases at least. So I'd say it's definitely a four point, uh, seven, five. What do you, what do you think? Yeah, um, I reviewed this on my channel probably about a year and a half ago. Um, this is a five out of five for me, and I think it still is. I, I, I just now there's a caveat, and the caveat is when I got these, and this is going to really piss off everybody in this chat. Oh no! Don't do that, dude. <laughs> I'm going to. When I when I bought these, I have two bottles of this. This is the first one, which is half filled or fat half. Half full, not half empty. Half full. <laughs> there you go. Let's be let's be positive. I got these for hundred and fifty dollars a piece, Ooh. which is a, a steal now. Yeah. Um, and so with with the, with cost consideration, even now, which I think you might be able to find it in the two hundred range, I think this is a five out of five whiskey, straight up. I I don't unless you were unless they're trying to charge you four hundred bucks for this. Maybe I would knock it down a peg just because I like to incorporate cost in like the overall valuation. I think you're hard pressed to find a more complex, rewarding whiskey in this, even in a 300 or less price range than this Bob Blair 25, 1990. If you're a bourbon fan, you are going to adore this. Telex, who is not a huge bourbon fan, you heard it. Uh, you know, even those bourbon notes, the way it plays so harmoniously with the two years in sherry, this is for a non peated whiskey, Highland malt, one of the probably close to perfect whiskeys you can get. I do, I do I prefer it neat, definitely. Uh, I was going back and I mean, yeah. I enjoy the bourbon notes a lot. And it, it's, I, I would occasionally still drop a couple of drops of water on it, but, but neat out of the gate, man, is, is unbelievably good. Yeah, this is a special whiskey. I there's no doubt about it. I uh, I bought it on a on a whim and a prayer. I, I didn't know anything about. It. I mean, I bought this again two years into my journey. Never really messed with Bob Blair, and I drank this and I was just mind blown. And I'm not disagreeing with your five out of five. I think I th I, I think that's a fair score. Now, the only reason other other, other than that I gave it a four point seven five instead of a five to me not now. Now, just kind of close your eyes and imagine this, right? A slightly peated version of this would be outstanding. <laughs> yeah. Oh, my God. Could It'll you imagine, good. like, if Lagavulin had this as their core make and they put you know the Lagavulin what? peat this with is it? What I imagine, this is what I would imagine a Highland Park 25 should taste like. But, like, with the wisp of peat. Add the wisp of peat smoke, and it's what I imagine a Highland Park 25 would taste like. And you're, you're you're pretty much on the money. Like honestly, not you think. And I've had the HP twenty five regular distillery release. It's way overpriced. Don't go and pay six hundred dollars or even five hundred dollars for it if you can help it. But if you do get a sample of it, I bet you'll you'll think to yourself, "Wow, that's kind of like a, a nice ball blur nineteen ninety with with uh, some heathery peat added to it." Because that's really what it's yeah. like. <laughs> I mean, to add that extra dimension would just be next level. I'm totally with you on that. Um, but yeah, if it was, I mean, if it was I, priced like three or four hundred dollars, it would be worth it, but not at five or six. You know what I mean? Right. Sorry, man. Go ahead. Yeah, no, no, you're good. Um, yeah, I gave this a five out of five when I reviewed it. I think I'm basically with you. I think with hindsight, I feel like I can justify a five out of five out of this now. Uh, oh, I, it's I solid, dude. Five is right there. I agree with you that if there was like one more dimension to it, considering how well they did this. How well they would do just a wisp of some like smoke just in the back maybe a charcoal note just a little accent on it it's a perfect whiskey 
Another uh, one that reminds me of this, if you put like a little smoke with it, is the uh, McAllen Rarecast Black. They have a travel yeah, retail version. Like a, yeah, I think it's that's slightly that slightly smoked. I was just lucky that I had a buddy that was, when we were doing our, our voyage around Scotland, he threw it in as, a, as a, a bonus. But I tell you what, man, I was not a huge McAllen fan before that. That one kind of changed my mind as maybe... No, their prices aren't worth it, but they can make a good dram when they sit their mind to it. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah totally. but it's definitely not worth this. I mean, even, I think that even the the first prices were like three to four hundred dollars, and the secondary market is probably just out the the crazy yin yin, you know, for the redcast black. But this one, if you could find it, man, one fifty would be a steal all day long. Total steal. Yeah, huge. Uh, I mean, for, yeah, I would, I would even pay two hundred for this easy. I think. Yeah, I would That's too. Good I think there's no doubt in my mind. Well, you know, Talix, uh, I'm glad you enjoyed it. I've, I've been wanting to get this in your hand for a while. Uh, we, this is week two. We got to do an Aaron Twenty One together last week, which was fantastic. Now this Paul Blair, um, you know, uh, this is, uh, this is a lot of fun. I can see why Mike Heifel, uh from uh, the Scotch for Dummies, the guy that, that kind of is on the side sometimes. He does a lot of their bourbon reviews. This yeah. is like his favorite Scotch th that he got into, and I can see why he loved it so much. Now, <laughs> if 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 you don't if you're a bourbon guy and you drink something like this and don't like it, there's something wrong with you. <laughs> yeah, I mean it's not as like robust and intense as a bourbon it's got the delicacy that scotch brings the delicacy which is synonymous with complexity in my opinion god the, the nose is like a 5.5 5 out of 5 <laughs> i know That's how good one the of the best noses ever. it's one of the best noses i've ever had there's no doubt uh the more i go back to it the more like meaty it gets it's it's weird it's like you think over time with oxidation it would get lower potent but it, the potency is still you know yeah. Still in your face. I'm glad you enjoyed it, my friend. Um, Definitely. I'm going to run for just a sec to uh, take a quick, and then uh, we'll continue the show. Take a quick. <laughs> I hear you. <laughs> Sounds good to me, man, and I really appreciate it. Let's uh, catch up here on the side. And, yes, you do need to try this ball, Blair, man. If you could find the 1990 – and, and this is the the one we've been looking at as the second release. But if you find a first release or any release of the 1990 Ball Blair, you need to find buy that sucker if it's affordable as soon as you can because it's that good. And unfortunately, they're not making it anymore. So it is on the high price price point. Unfortunately, uh, Ben, I, I know what you mean there. But it's still, you know, it's it's it's. Sometimes you get lucky and find these on dusty shelves for like a hundred bucks. I have seen it happen before. Um, I found a Lafroy 18 for ninety dollars not too long ago. So it can happen. You just gotta go do your homework and and you know do some some liquor store rating in, in rural areas basically. Rated the, the Glen going uh, twenty five a few points higher. Wow. Give it a ninety last year. No, it's 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 definitely uh it's definitely good. Yeah, it's uh it's it's solid. I I, I know where you can get a ninety. We can talk. Oh, okay, cool. That sounds good to me. Um, I might have to uh, get a bottle of that at some point. Sorry, I'm going in reverse backwards. <laughs> Yeah, I know which I know how to, I have one and one makes it hard enough sometimes to 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 get something uh going uh scotch wise. So I know how you feel there. Joseph Magnus after sitting for an hour is still cherry, oak, and loads snells of spice. Much better though. Really good bourbon. I'd like to hear some feedback from some bourbon guys. Yeah, if there's any bourbon guys and, and there are some of you guys I know in the channel, um uh, even though we usually don't take a look at bourbons uh I, i'm definitely not not opposed to it on the side if you uh have some notes you'd like to share looks like uh trooper had a 12 pheno cask and it was dry okay that sounds like i might have to skip that one i do like pheno cask but i'm not a huge fan of the dryness uh thankfully that lafroig pheno wasn't terribly dry uh for me at least but Yes, thankfully baseball is back. I've been watching my um 
my uh, Nationals, Cubs, Orioles when I get a chance. Uh, thankfully, they've both been uh, doing pretty well. And there's Malt. Yeah, I was just talking about the – looks like Daniel was talking about a Joseph Magnus. Have you ever had one of their bourbons before? No, I haven't. And being a, being a guy who lived in D.C. as long as I did, I felt bad. He was. I think Daniel mentioned that a little bit on the uh, on the pregame show um, when we were chatting. And, uh, yeah, I never got a chance to really – I've only had the Murray Club. I had a sip of the Murray Club. Uh, but yeah, uh, you know, being a DC guy, I always felt bad because they were like 90 to a hundred bucks. I was like, ah, I can't pay that much for a bourbon. So I didn't do it, but you know, I've heard things and he's got a triple cask. I think that he's doing right now. Ah, uh, uh, he just said Joseph Magnus. And then I saw this one from Daniel. He said, uh, he asked another YouTuber about the 90. He just yelled about it from a post until it was gone. And then he cried. <laughs> <laughs> That's sad, man. Never uh, laid eyes on a Joseph Magnus. Is that is that a DC area deal? Ah, uh, yeah, they're in DC proper. Um, oh, okay. Boy, I wish I could remember the name of that distillery. Um, yeah, they're in DC proper. I'll take a look around see if I can find it. it sounds like he he liked it after you know letting it sit out for an hour. Uh, a lot of cherry oak and spice, and it sounds good to me. Meister's envious of the ball blair yeah you do need it man it's it is good if you can find it hopefully uh hopefully you can uh find it on the side I, like i told him i i was able to find that lefroy 18 a couple bottles dusty for 90 bucks so you never know what where you might you know run into a rural you know rural town and walk into the liquor store and find a ball blair 1990 you never know <laughs> yeah somebody mentioned that baseball was back yeah i mean i'm excited about that too obviously i'm rocking a phillies hat but I'm a Brewers fan, first and foremost. Oh, we no. We had a nice comeback last night. Which was Harry Carey, Cubs for the win. <laughs> oh, my and favorite team. Won, I mean, we always lived in the shadow of Chicago, so the Cubs win a little bit. My dark, favorite teams, though, are the Nationals and the Orioles. Yeah, I love the Nats, man. The I Orioles, though, are tough to root for. <laughs> Orioles, yeah. Orioles have had some rough years. I mean, they're, they're, in, they're in a tough division, you know. Oh yeah, the Yankees and the Red Sox. It's like that's an, enough. And then you also go throw the Blue Jays and the Devil Rays in there, and it just makes it just yeah, 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 tough. Totally, totally. But no, I, I was happy to so happy to see the Nats win last uh, year. I guess man, oh, it's usually been an eon ago. Amazing win. I mean, how I wish I would have been in D.C. for that. I lived when I lived in D.C. I was about I lived in Southwest, so I was. I'm not even lying. I was six blocks away from the Nat Stadium. I used to be able to oh, man. see the scoreboard, like scores change all this from my balcony. Oh, you bastard. <laughs> Why'd you have to move? <laughs> I know. Well, you know, life life changes. But uh yeah, I spent a lot of time man. that was that was a lot of fun. Um I went to a ton of Nats games. Really, really good time. Every time the Brewers were in town, I went and I rocked my Brewers gear. I would not rock my Brewers gear at Citizens Bank in Philly. I'll tell you, that. I wear this as more of like a, it's like a bulletproof vest than anything. Philly, you, Philly is a different, it's a different town. Do you see yourself staying there for a long, long time, like long term, or do you? Yeah, see no, it as yeah a, man. Um, you know, I'm definitely going to be here probably for another year, uh, and you know, we'll see where life takes me, but. Um, you know, I, I do miss I do miss my my Midwest roots. Um, you know, I lived in Milwaukee for thirty some years before I moved oh, to DC wow. here, and you know, I'm a I'm a diehard Packers, Brewers, Bucks fan, uh, Midwest see, boy. So to some degree, you know. So do you see yourself moving back to Wisconsin before you would go back I, to DC? I mean, I'll be honest, like my favorite city in the United States, and I, I've been I've been blessed between my own like kind of travel itch and my work. I've got to travel a lot around the country. Um, I visited most cities. My favorite city in the United States is Chicago. Okay. I um, gotcha. Well, I am not a Cubs fan and will never be, <laughs> nor a Bears fan. At least you're not a White Sox fan. fan. <laughs> White, what are the White Sox? <laughs> exactly. Uh, uh, I, agree I, with uh, <laughs> I could see myself at some point in time in life living in Chicago. Um, I think it, it's just my scene. I love, I love that city. Uh, I think it's this is my favorite city I've been in the U.S., but I would yeah, – it'll be a cold day before you see me catching – wearing Cubs gear. That's for sure. <laughs> I, I don't blame you. Being a, a Brewers fan, I know how it goes. Yeah, we're, we're, the, we're the crappy underdog city, you know, in Milwaukee. <laughs> mm. 
let's take a look at this uh, at this uh, Clone Scotia, maybe if you feel oh, like is it. it. Time? If you feel like it, we we can do that, or we could put it let's off. Do it. So let me set the table on this. Um, over the last three months, uh, each week on my happy hour show on my channel, we have been doing a periodic tasting of a Glen Scotia single cask, hand filled from the distillery, 10 years old, 56.3% uh, whiskey. This whiskey had a note on the nose that was beyond anything I've ever had before. Funky as hell. I have characterized it as chewable children's vitamins, the choppiness and the weird sweet fruit mixed with like a shoe polish thing in a made in a damp basement. Um, it is also the cloudiest whiskey I have ever seen. And for, for everybody to see, that is how cloudy this is still after three months. Wow, man. Yeah. And so I paid a lot for this because I'm a big Glen Scotia fan. And the evolution of what has happened on my channel is been, uh, some folks recommended that I reach out to the people who sold it to me and ask if there's a, some type of taint to it. I did. They were adamant it wasn't. I then reached out to Glen Scotia, which culminated in a interview with Glen Scotia, which I have on my channel. Um, they seem to demure the cloudiness, but definitely thought the notes that I was explaining were crazy, we were, were off. And so one thing I'll mention is, as you can see the top on this, it has a tape that went over it. There was no plastic wrap on this. This was just tape. Hmm. And that's because this is a hand-filled distillery bottle. Yeah, it's even signed. So you're not, you know, you buy it at the distillery. Now, Glen Scotia said on the interview that, like, they're looking at actually wrapping these things more and that secondary bottling companies shouldn't be selling this. So all of that said, over the last 12, 13 weeks, I have been tasting this whiskey. Daniel says that this is the day we've all been waiting for. I've been tasting this whiskey each week and explaining, like, for me, the nose had this unbelievably funky weird note that seemed very off it had a good palate and then the finish had the same thing and so uh while it has gotten better i think in the last couple of weeks you are having a little bit more of an oxidized version of this uh you are about to embark on what has been a very controversial whiskey that i've been tasting and uh some of the folks who are part of my who joined my happy hour are going to be dying to hear your thoughts on this so i'm going to pour a glass um we call this Mr. Cloudy for a good reason, <laughs> because it was one of the most messed up whiskeys I've ever had. Telix, when you nose this, do you get a note that you would say is one of the most bizarre, undetected notes that you've ever had before? Okay. Well, I will say that the first thing that did catch my eye was the cloudiness of the dram. And, and that's not right. something that you typically want to see. So I'm wondering if this is one of those things where Glen Scotia was, you know, doing or some the secondary, things. the independent bottler, which I think. Well, right. I think. They the bottler, but the company that sold it. Yeah. Yeah. I think that Glen Scotia was probably doing some like hand filled stuff and somebody might, might have came in and then got a bottle and then i mean i i, I can't explain the cloudiness though <laughs> have you just, ever seen anything like that <laughs> i have not in a in a in a in a whiskey like this this is definitely different when it comes to the the cloudy factor. Sorry, I'm, I'm kind of looking at no, it. No, do it, man. Here. Take your time. Uh, this second opinion is going to be big because I have said either A, the note that I get off this is something that I'm just not accustomed to and I've never had, or B, there's something very wrong with this whiskey. The, on the good side, just looking at the legs, it does hold the legs really well. It runs oh, yeah. really slow. I mean, it's 50, 56.3, so that makes sense. 10-year-old, I mean, it's got the 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 pedigree, but that cloudiness makes me kind of uneasy. Well, don't worry. I drink a drink, a dram every week for the last three months. You will not go blind. <laughs> I was going to say, you still have your eyesight, so at least I'm, I'm not going to go blind. But, wow. It makes you wonder what, what if someone did something after the fact. But, yeah, the nose is, is definitely... <laughs> There's something wrong, isn't there? 
Like, what is that? You get that? You know what I'm talking about? That sharp, weird. I'm yes. going to give you the floor on this. I'm not going to. I'm not going to taint you. I want to. I just want to hear your your honest opinion. Yeah, the, 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 I hate to use negative terms, but the, but it does have definitely not. It's not a note that you would typically find. I, I, I have not found this in a whiskey other than maybe one other time. Oh, really? Maybe one, and I'll, I'll get to that in a second. It's not this one. Thankfully, is not as bad. Believe it or not, as the the whiskey I'm thinking of. But it is like this. I want to say medicinal, but it's not nice medicinal like Lafroyd TCP iodine medicinal. This is like formaldehyde is like the word that comes to mind. Is that make sense? The way I described it is chewable vitamins, chalky chewable vitamins mixed with shoe polish. Yeah, it's like it. it when you said the chew, chew the the chewy vitamins i'm like okay but when you threw in the shoe polish that yeah. makes sense it's kind of yeah it's almost like let me ask you one thing underneath that do you not notice what seems like a really delicious vibrant like sherry whiskey like behind that note yeah it doesn't smell like uh, it, it, it's funny because it doesn't smell great but it doesn't smell bad either it's it's very different than it's more it's funny it's almost like they try to put a really heavy vegetal dram out but not knowing that it was going to be more of a sauerkraut than a vegetal kind of thing it's got a sauerkraut almost kind of a oh man that's good it's I have in my glass too with leather leather and sauerkraut <laughs> But it's not. It, it, it's funny. The, the the dram that that rem, this reminds me of on the nose level is that Avondurg that I've always like told people I absolutely hated on the palate. Now the nose is similar, so I am kind of nervous about tasting this. But the Avondurg three year old was was a, just absolutely horrible. Uh, and it, it was it was worse on the palate than the nose. So. Hopefully, I'm, am I going to be cringing when I taste this, or is it going to? Well, be- let me. Do you want to know what I my overall thought was? Um, the nose is exactly what you said. the The palate is actually really good, and the finish is back to what you said. Oh That's wow! That's my experience been with it. It was uh, Whiskey International online, Stephen. Huh. Really saying something's up with the bottle. Like, yeah. Uh, I'm gonna let Telex take the floor. Okay. Wait. <laughs> wow, that is different. But hmm. Okay. That is really bizarre. It's it's <laughs> it's, it's not it's not but the, thankfully the palate is a hell of a lot better than Avon Durg ever thought of being. The palate's great. And it, this is this has got some peat in it, and it's got yeah, some yeah, sherry. So, yeah, yeah. It, first when you wrote peat and sherry, I was like, really? And, and I can definitely sense both. It's it's not bad. It's just so different than what I've ever experienced. Not just with the Campbelltown or Glen Scotia, but it's. This has got to be something that they were doing some really heavily, heavily, um, heavily ex- experimentation on, or something. Is there? Uh, it, it's it's so different than the. Now, how's that finish landing for you? I'll tell you what. At first, it, it, to me, there's like two finishes going on with this. Believe it or not, the the the, the initial palette is is a nice peated cherry dram which i was cool with but then right after the initial palette there is some really major funky note going on Dude, yes exactly but i'll tell you what at the end of the finish there's a nice barbecue like almost like a a roasted barbecue flavor but there is there is a funky factor what wow is that, man, man. Let, me, is let me that? let me find it hold on I think I know. I think I might know something. Hold on. It's a medium mouthfeel. 
Initial palette's good. Mm. I'm wondering. It's so different. I'm wondering if the the barley that they used with this had some like either a like crazy experimentation like weird thing going on. B, it was rare in some sort of like one off that they might have found. The finish is actually pretty long, but it's not bad. Yeah. It's just it's just between the nice palette, that crazy funky note, and then the, the, the nice finish, that, that that funky note makes it I mean, what is that? Is it acetone? Is it the chalk? Yeah, it's like they put like a sweet chalk. That's the way I described it. It's like a sweet chalk, but it also has a tart sharpness to it that like I can't it's almost like I mean I never I don't drink nail pol polish remover but it's almost got like a an acetone it's almost got like an acetone note to it I know I'm I, I feel like I'm insane but Alex thank you I am not I guarantee you I'm not the only person in this chat saying thank you right now but thank you because I'm telling you bro if I, dude, I wish I could show you this. I don't think you could see. Do you see that dark ring at the bottom of this whiskey? Yeah, that's weird. What it's, is that? Dude, it, there's wisps of this going through it, like dark ribbons of something. Like It's like barrel char. So, huh. Glenn Scotia said the following. Okay, I'm, I'm really eager to see what they were going to say was in the bottom of this bottle. <laughs> they said, and, and for the record, I pressed them a little bit during the interview that I did, which is live on my channel if you want to check it out. I don't think this is their fault. I think this was a mistreated bottle. My theory is that this is a mistreated bottle. Now that you've tasted it and you've confirmed what I thought, that there is something in this that I have, it is a funky note that makes no sense. Dude, I wish I could have poured you for this when I first said it. It would have blown, like, it was absurd but let me let me just tell you this um they said the cloudiness their their pitch was more about how this is a hand-filled bottling from the distillery they talked about how like this isn't something you should be able to buy other than in the distillery and that the cloudiness is like a very natural expression so they were pretty defensive of the cloudiness okay well but when i described the note you were saying the master distiller said that there's something wrong with yeah, not what it's supposed to taste, and 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 I'm sure you still have it on your tongue. You feel that that like, it's like a cloying, like. Oh. Wow, man! Yeah, it's like, it's like a um. Oh man, it's like if <laughs> now I don't want to get gross here. No, but, go ahead, man. It, you know, it, everybody it, in the chat that's on my channel has been listening to me talk about this for 13 weeks. If you swim in a pool and you accidentally open your mouth and get chlorine in it. And then you have that aftertaste of chlorine. It, that's what it reminds me of. It's really like, it's not acidic, but it's not a base. It's like just a mishmash of chemicals almost. It's weird. I wonder if, if uh, cause I mean, I've had a hand filled uh, sample from, um, from uh, Aquavite one time from Lafroig and it did not have those kind of qualities as far as cloudiness and things like that. But with that said, they are, I'm sure they're always doing some sort of um, like one-off like experimentations. I have a feeling that what we got our hands on is something they they did purposely do, but they did not want it to get out. I, I bet you that they they did something internally where they they thought they were going to have a, a distillery offering, and I bet you the master distiller or somebody was like, no. And put the squash on it, but somehow I bet you they, unfortunately, with leaks, just like with any other type of leak, I bet you somebody leaked this shit out. And and Dude, when you said chlorine, <laughs> I'm telling you, you hit the nail on the head. Um, so you bring up an interesting point here, Telix. Um, again, first, I I felt like I've been potentially crazy because I'm like, is there just something like, am I just missing something? But my, my general theory, so like the way that you're putting it out is that 
you think maybe this was like, so here's the thing. You go to a distillery, they make a bunch of, you get a hand-filled bottle there. In other words, they're just pouring experimental stuff for people and people are walking off of it. Like, I, I get what you're saying. No, no, no. I think, I think that they, 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 I think that they occasionally do like a, 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 a cast that they mean to release to the public in the distillery only bottling mode. I think what happened though was with this particular cask was about to get, get promoted to that distillery only level, but somebody was probably like after, you know, like we did nosing it and, and sampling, it was probably like, whoa, this is not ready for prime time. Put it in, you know, this area. But I think somebody made a mistake of getting it to the floor, if you know what I mean. So you think this is a mistake though? <laughs> I think that somebody at the distillery okay. internally made a mistake of releasing this as a as anything because obviously from both of us if both of us are like yeah it's it, i can see it being from glen scotia as far as some of the notes but some yeah. of the notes are so strange that i mean it, it's I, I can't even fathom what they put in there to make it that way <laughs> I mean, it's not, and the weird thing is, it's not all bad. There's just a couple notes. That I know. Make that's it what, kind of that's exactly really crazy. It, bro. Dude, bro, that's exactly it. It's like the nose is like, oh, there's some good stuff in here, but there is something weird going on. And then the palate's like, oh, this is good. And then it goes into that. It comes back with like a vengeance. You had literally one of the very similar experience to me. I, I'm, I'm telling you, I'm going to go back through all of my happy hours for the last couple months and try to put together a mashup of like the evolution of me going through this, because I'm telling you, man, there is you validate. I mean, you're validating this. And like, just for the record, everybody, he did not have this beforehand. We didn't. Oh, no, it's this. the first time. I didn't I've tell had him it. like, yo, defend me. This is this, this is, is Alex the whiskey tech, y'all. This is the first time I've, I've, I've even, I mean, the only thing I did beforehand was I tried to just give it a nose, like with the bottle. Yeah. I couldn't really get much out of it, but when I poured it into the Glencairn and nosed it, I definitely got that note, you know, that, that you were. You've never had anything like this in your life, have you, man? <laughs> it's almost like they were thinking, okay, let's do a whiskey, but let's also put like gin or brandy or something else in it. I mean, it's, it's that yeah, different. That. It's that different where it, I mean, if it had like, you know, I've had a Springbank Burgundy for, before. I mean, different is generous though. It, like, it's different. Is it different? Is it different? Like different means there's something you can compare it to, in my opinion. Like, do you think this is different or do you think this is just straight up? Uh, out of left field. <laughs> there's there's something that they that, that they definitely they definitely did either mistakenly got like I don't know if Glen Scotia does anything but scotch, but if they do do brandy or gin or other types of of, of liquor, it's almost like they they had a leak of another liquor in the in the the deal. I mean. I hate to say that, but it's that yeah. it's that different. It it doesn't take like any scotch I've ever had as far as that <laughs> weird it's and I don't want to say it's all chemical chlorine. It's like I know. Chemical chlorine is a good way. I've been saying chewable vitamin and tree polish, but I think you're right. Chemical chlorine is 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 totally totally there. I'm curious. I mean, I'm gonna. I'm, I'm tempted to save part of this and send it to somebody just to see what they think. Yes, the, right. Dude, just yeah. to see what they think of it, because I I want to I, I want to make sure I'm not losing my mind, but I'm I'm pretty. No sure. man, I wanted to make sure I wasn't losing my mind, and you're validating me, which is good because like you probably have a, a notch or two above me on your tasting your tasting field, and I'm telling you, I was like, yo, if Telex thinks this is good, I'm gonna feel like a total idiot. I'm gonna do one more just to make sure I'm not like do it, do it. It's in my here's mind. The, here's the worst part, Telex. I'm gonna tell you. You know what the worst part about this whiskey is? I still want to drink it because that palate is so good. <laughs> that like development part of the palate is really tasty. It actually is a good whiskey, like on on like yeah. its foundation. It's just what the hell? Like 
What the hell happened in between is my question. Let me, record. Let me just let me just give you the full reading here. Yeah, I was gonna say let me single, tell me everything cast. that's on that bottle because I want to know. So this is it says single cast shop bottling distillation date two thousand eight. Hold on, this say shop bottling. Yes, shop bottling. This is like you only get this when you go to the distillery and they fill you a bottle of it. Okay. It is signed by hand by somebody right here. So that's what I mean about like this is a distillery only bottle. So in other words. The company that sold this to me probably shouldn't have been selling it. Distillation date, 2008. Release date, 2000, November 2018. 56.3%. Rich sherry and peat nose, sweet oily with bergamot, develops with lemon drizzle cake with a salty hue, a classic Campbelltown whiskey. Cask number 2017-416, shop bottling. That's what you got. But you. That's my point. Like what you were saying earlier about like they may have had something that they put out for some reason. Like, dude, if you have people touring your distillery and this is what you send them home with, would you really expect them to come back and want to buy your whiskey? I'm telling you, man, this is I don't think Glen Scotia, and again. I interviewed Glen Scotia. I'm not taking free shit from Glen Scotia. They offered to interview me because I wrote to them and persisted on like trying to get some answers on this. They responded. I give them credit for that. My point simply is this whiskey, like the company that I bought it from online. If, if there's blame to be made, my general assessment is it was them that messed up this bottle. Yeah, it's it's, it's tough because it's like on the second go around, of course, it's not going to be as profound on the funkiness because you've already experienced it. But I'm trying to see if – I mean, it's, it's funny because it still is a good dram. I mean, it's, it's, it's funny because you feel torn. It's like – yeah. Rating like if I had to give a score to this, I, it's really tough because like the underlying profile basic juice mm -hmm. is actually you know pretty good, quite good. Like I would for a ten year old, yeah, like I would definitely this all day if it didn't have that overcoat of this freaking ridiculous note. Yeah, with without that note, I give it like a four. You know, four yeah, totally, five. totally agree, totally agree. With the, the that funky, and I'm wondering, and I'm not trying to give them an excuse here. I'm trying to figure out what is that coming from. If it's not like something after the fact, like that second, you know, the secondary business did something with it. It it's it's such a. I'm thinking it might be such a heavy floral that it's it's overwhelming the palate off of that. Um, Whatever's giving that, it's almost like a floral note. It's weird. It almost would. I wouldn't call it soapiness, like I get off a of local Loman twelve, but it's it's om, it's it's right before you get to soapiness. It's like it's it's somewhat medicinal, somewhat uh, chemically, somewhat uh, artificial on one end, but it does have some like vibrance and some floral qualities to it and i'm wondering am, am i just getting like a, a floral note that i've never had before but it's so profound it's it's hard just to call it a floral note at the same time you know what i mean dude yeah i mean it's hard to put words to it it's definitely one of a kind i've never had um a whiskey and and, and i know they're trying to say that it's hand filled but the cloudiness to me that's, I mean, if I was a, a any, even if I wasn't a master distiller and I was just like a, a, a basic blender slash, you know, guy working at the distillery. And if someone asked me, hey, check out the, you know, what's in VAT 12. And if I opened it up or had a way to look at it, with, you know, w without it being uh, colored in a glass and could just look at it from the outside and if i saw that cloudiness i'm sorry but i would exit i would mark it not ready for for the public i mean that's right, which 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 stands to reason that like what we're actually dealing with here is not something that glenn scotia just like put out but rather something that was mistreated by somebody else potentially you know like um just for transparency's sake um, I'm going to drop in the chat 
the interview that I did with Glenn Scotia, which was driven mostly by the uh, by the folks on my channel who pushed me to write them and ask questions. I will drop the link in the chat. Feel free to check it out at your leisure and make your own decisions. But, you know, Telex, I appreciate you entertaining this because, you know, uh, I'll be honest, part of me was wondering, like, am I missing something? Is this just a, a scotch note that I've never got before? Mm. Is there just something going on here that I've never had? And it sounds to me that like your reaction is similar to mine, which is like, there's something very off about this. The weird thing is like, like th th that, that note is still going on. That, that, I know it's that, hanged on forever, dude. It hangs on forever. <laughs> It's it's I'm I'm trying to decide if I hate it or if I like it or if I'm just indifferent to it and it's like I think I'm just indifferent to it because it's got like this weird maritime seashell feel something right but it still has that chlorine kind of thing going on and that's where I'm I'm kind of like you ever had a chewable Flintstones vitamin in your life yeah it does have that kind of a feel in in the only other whiskey I ever got this experience from but the other whiskey was definitely a nightmare experience was the Brooklady Octomore 7.3 it it tasted a lot like a durian fruit if you've mm -hmm. ever smelled or tasted durian it's absolutely horrible to some people like myself I don't enjoy it some people love it and i think that's what they were gearing for with that but it, it's it, it's definitely got that chewable vitamin yeah i don't know man <laughs> you know what i mean about the chewable vitamin yeah it's chalky it's like, and medicinal it's like, if, it's like if you added some type of like varnish to it you know yeah. I mean? like, it's like that chalky sweet like that horrible chalky sweetness that you get off thinking, and then the like varnish note. Some people like that. I mean, it's funny because when I've tasted the Octomore 7.3, I was so off putting. I was so off put by it. I only drank literally like two drams and I gave the bottle yeah. to Mr. Lee. Yeah. And like, and I think that's the thing. It's the question has always been whether or not, like for me, and, and I've been saying this on my live chat with folks when I taste this, the question hasn't been like, is it good or not? it's been like, is this normal or a natural thing? And I think that like, the you know, that's what's been most important to me is, am I just missing something here or is there something off, right? And and the interview I did with Glenn Scotia speaks for itself. Like I, I do ask them pretty specifically about this. I mean, they're, I give them major cred, like they, they were cool about it. Uh, and interview I'm surprised they were willing to go on the air and, and talk about it because yeah. obviously the like to me that what makes it not that screams out issue is the cloudiness. If it was clear and it had a natural color and it was a little more just maybe a little iffy on the palate, then that, it would probably be more of a well, it's right. probably just the notes. But that color alone and cloudiness, man, it was just told me something just didn't. Some somebody messed up somewhere. You know what I mean. I don't know if it's the guy doing the 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 dip, getting the out of the vat, or if it was quality control, or somebody yeah. messed up somewhere. I think that's just my yeah. uh, mini. No, I'm with you. I'm with you. I'm totally <laughs> with you, man. I. It's always been the taste and the cloudiness, and like, and again, um, the uh, I did drop the link in. Um, I'm not trying to be shameless about it, but if folks are interested in hearing what I, what Glenn Scotia had to say about it. I give them tons of credit. I, my general feeling, my general position on this, especially after you tasting it is that, um, this is likely uh, a taintedness that happened outside of Glenn Scotia's, um, purview <laughs> that between it going to this company that shouldn't have been selling it, maybe to selling it to whatever, uh, that that's the case here, but um, does it make you think different of Glen Scotia as a distillery going through this? So it doesn't. So like, I'm going to be totally, I'll be transparent. Um, way before this even showed up at my doorstep um, last year, Glen Scotia 15 was my whiskey of the year under a hundred dollars. Oh, definitely. Yeah. For, for 
a very precise reason is that I thought it was an excellent, excellent whiskey at a good under the radar price. Um, I love the Victoriana. I really enjoy it. And I enjoyed their stuff. And it was because I enjoyed their stuff so much that I even decided to spend the money to buy it. Yeah. And that is what has prompted this entire adventure. I hope it doesn't like stain your opinion of. It doesn't. Yeah, no, the- it doesn't. And, and like I said, you know, Lock Loman Group, who owns Glen Scotia, after a couple of weeks of going back and forth and talking with them and talking to them about the bottle, the fact that they agreed to meet with me, let me air an interview. Again, you can take their responses for what they are. Um, the fact that they were willing to talk about their whiskey with me was a real treat. And I respect the fact that they were willing to like not disregard me. If this would have been a McAllen, they probably would have said, screw you. But Glenn's yeah. is not it's a huge would have been like, what? They're, yeah, they're not a huge <laughs> distillery. Uh, they don't necessarily have the market share and name recognition that some of the bitter whiskeys do. And so they took it seriously, even though, look, look, I have a rel- I mean, I have 500 some subs. It's not like I have a huge channel. But like, I appreciate the fact that they took it seriously and were willing to meet with me. I didn't you know, let them, it wasn't about pandering. It wasn't about like trying to go. They said what they were going to say. They let me air things un unedited, which you will notice in the video. There's no editing in that video. That's good. And it doesn't change, change my opinion about, the, about their whiskey at all. Have you yeah, had their, they um, stood up for it. And so I'll give them credit for that. Have you had the, um, the, uh, the one that's not the 15, but the double, I think it's called a double cast. That's the basic entry level one. Have you had um, that one before? I no, I haven't either. I need to give that a look. And uh, the 18, have you ever had a chance to have their 18 before? I have a bottle, but I haven't opened it yet. So the interesting thing about that, that it has a sherry cast condition. So the funny thing about the 15, which I think a lot of people drink it, maybe you've had it. Like, did you know that the Glen Scotia 15 is all ex bourbon? I didn't. Know. I could have sworn there were sherry cast right. influences in that. Right. Right. And, and the weird thing is that you mentioned the eighteen. I was lucky enough to to sample it at a at an expo, and I wasn't really into it because it tasted more of just a straightforward bourbon cask. But that's the one that supposedly has sherry in it. So yeah. I'm interested to see what you think when you do open it. If you get the sherry off of it versus maybe you and I should do it together. Yeah, if you don't mind, I would definitely be all about having a little sample of that because I, I had I never got my own bottle of the uh, eighteen. I got the uh, fifteen and the uh, Victoriana, um, but I have never got my own eighteen. But I did have the sample, and, it, and expos are tough because you're sampling so many whiskeys. It's really hard to give it a a true you know go over. So I, it would be nice to sit down with it and really see if it's got any sherry notes that really shine. You know what I mean? Yeah, definitely. Um, the last thing I'll say just to like close the book on the Glen Scotia thing. And um, as I mentioned, like I, you know, I saw Andrew Page just mentioned that he learned a lot from the interview. That's super cool. Like this is the first interview I've ever done. It only happened because of this. I get, again, I give Glen Scotia credit for being willing to come on and talk about this. I told them in advance, yeah, I'm going to ask you some questions about Glen Scotia and what's your distillery all about, but I'm going to ask you some questions about this bottle. <laughs> and I also included... Uh, you you didn't say, why does this suck so bad, did you? <laughs> no, um, I didn't. But no, I also, it actually does not suck. I shouldn't say that. I, I should have worded it like, where do these funky notes come from? Do they have yeah, any... Yeah, no, I mean... The interview speaks for itself. I also, you know, I wanted, because this hasn't just been a journey for me. I'm going to be honest with you. Like this is this going through this thing with the whiskey. Again, I opened this whiskey on my like live stream because I was like, oh, this is going to be amazing. I'm so excited to share like what I learned about this whiskey with, with the folks that are in the happy hour. And it became, it grew into something. And so what I did was I solicited questions from folks who are subscribers who joined the happy hour uh, and you know, I didn't get a chance to ask them all, but I asked a couple of questions from some of the folks. Some of them are in the chat tonight, including Andrew Page. And I asked Glenn Scotia some of the questions that some of the people who subbed to the channel got, and it was a good experience. Like they're really good guys. We got to chat about it. Um, we got to learn a bit about Glenn Scotia. Again, I before I even tried this single cask, I was singing the praises of Glenn Scotia. So 
you know, it was a good experience. It's weird that this is what led to this interview. Yeah. Um, I do encourage folks to check it out if they're interested. And like, honestly, you know, I appreciate you trying this because it, it, it validates some of the things for me, because honestly, I've been in a time warp with this. I'm like, I've, I've let the bottle sit out with a, with a cork off for 24 hours, then 72 hours. Then I'm like, some folks are like, put it in the fridge for a week. And like, I'm like thinking of all <laughs> these things to do to try to figure this out. And like, if you have to put a whiskey in a fridge for a week, there's a problem. Yeah, no, totally, totally. And so, I'm going to save this though. Uh, I've got like a half left. I'm going to save this and I it. might send this to somebody just to see what they think and, and have them uh, give their own little notes uh, and, and see just, just to see if, if we are both out of our minds or if, if we're okay. Well, that's the thing, right? Like, I thought I was out of my mind. Now it's like you're telling me I'm not, and now you don't think maybe I'm out of my mind. like. It, yeah, it's 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 definitely some. Flicky. Whenever there's any doubt, there is no doubt. You know what I'm saying? That's a it's an axiom for life. If you guys ever learn anything about anything from us, whenever there's any doubt, there's no doubt. Yeah. Hey, Stephen. Uh, before I forget, I wanted to ask you, Stephen Connor, have you ever had a car do that you liked? I'm just curious because I'm. It's one of those distilleries that I just have this um, that you know that gold reserve bottle I did earlier. I've tasted the 18 and the 12, and I wasn't really blown away. I know they have a 21 that's like a, a an off year. Is there any car do that you actually recommend picking up? Uh, preferably like an older year. Uh, if it's this, the 18, I'll, I'll do that. But I'm trying to broaden my horizons a little bit. <laughs> and, and, and and this would be good for Malt, too, because he's never bought a, a Cardi bottle for himself. So it would be good to know which yeah, one to pull the trigger on, definitely. if there is one that's worth the damn. <laughs> and I don't stay it. independent. I'm looking for a distillery bottle. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to cleanse my palate with some uh, Port Charlotte 10-year-old. Nice. That's, that's a nice, uh, a nice pick for that. I, I was debating on whether to. I'm, a, I'm getting lazy. I'm just going to go back to a little bit of this car, dude. But I do have that Ben Rennes 15. Uh, I was saving a little bit of that Ben Rennes 15 for um, kind of a, a dram on the side, and that's a good, that's a good one of that series. I have to say, the Dolly Wayne, the Ben Rennes, and the uh, Inch Gower are, are, and the Blair Athol are definitely good in that series. I wish they had more options, though, when it comes to later years. Just sticking with a twelve or a fifteen is kind of like eh, when you want to get like a you know a twenty-one or an eighteen at least if you can get your hands on one. But I'm really eager to take a look at the new Romic. I haven't had any of the Bern, new Brin. Yeah, I've seen the you know. I mean, here we were drinking Bobler earlier, which has totally changed their presentation. Ben Romick, not as extreme. It's just a label change. But have you had any Ben Romics that you recommend? And I do want to I do want to ask one question before you respond to that. This weekend, I came across a Ben Romick ten year old, what's called the Imperial Proof, it's about ninety bucks. So one, do you have Ben Romics that you recommend? Two, if you've had the Imperial Proof. Is a ninety bucks a good price on that? I hope you pulled the deal. You haven't pulled the trigger on that yet. I didn't pull the trigger, buddy. Pull the trigger because that's exactly the same as this bottle. This is the Imperial Proof ten year old. It's a uh, really, yeah, really damn. Right. That's, that's, that looks about right. It's really damn good. It's one of the best uh, Benromics I've had, and I've had the Pete Smoke two thousand six, and the um, couple other ones. And I think the 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 Imperial Proof ten year. It's like a almost like a cast strength, if I remember correctly. Let me see what the. It's fifty seven percent on the uh, ABV, and that's really really good. I would I would definitely pull the trigger on that one. Um, and ninety bucks. Oh yeah. Oh, I, I'm surprised it's not one ten. To be honest with you. Good to know. I have the fifteen and the organic, but I saw that and I didn't pull the trigger. But I can totally go back and get it. You really should, I think. You that's recommend, I've never had a Benromic, but I saw that and I was like, ooh, that seems like a good price. <laughs> it's funny because I went I went to a bar in Baltimore. Do you ever frequent Baltimore at all? Not as much as I want to. 
I'm trying to remember which the, what the place was called. It was really low key, but they had a really good like off the wall offerings like the Glen Farkas 105. They had the cast strength of that. Mm-hmm. They had the Imperial Proof of the Benromic was one of them. And I was like, I need to try that because I've heard, I heard a lot of great things about it, and I'm glad I did. And I sat down and I had a dram, and I tell you what, it made me want to buy a bottle. It was that good, and that takes a lot for me to want to go and, and seek it out if you know what i mean yeah totally so i think i think for definitely 90 i'm surprised it's not 110 to be honest with you for that abv price i mean yeah, i know it's, it's the old labeling too because you know they've changed all their labeling so yeah you can't get you, you also you cannot get that anymore i would definitely be all over that if you can um but I am looking forward to trying any of the new. Is the fifteen the still the oldest thing that they they offered? That, do you know? Um, I'm not sure. I've had the fifteen for a little bit. I've just, you know, I'm going to do it relatively soon. Um, I'll take a quick look at the distiller and, and see if they have any other ones besides the fifteen for Benromic. Benromic. Fifteen is the first one that comes up. They have a Heritage 35, but I bet that's crazy price. <laughs> uh, hundred, a hundred proof is the other name, like Imperial proof. I'm not sure if that's the American name, but basically, if you see Imperial proof versus the a hundred proof, it's the same bottle. It's just a different. Oh, interesting. Okay. Yeah, I think the proof was for the UK. Let me see one second. A hundred percent proof is available in the UK. Other markets outside the US where it's sold is the Imperial proof. So there you go. Um, but yeah, it looks like the thirty-five is the oldest, but that's probably gonna be a crazy price. Oh, isn't it a shame that they don't have like a twenty one, twenty five option? Right. Yeah, I've you know, like I said, I've I've not really had many of those, so um Oh, Juan's in the house. What's up, Juan? Nice to see you, buddy. Happy Tuesday. Tasty Tuesday. Tuesday, Tuesday, whatever you want to call it. They do have a lot of ratings already for the Big Roman Mc20. I'm sorry, the Big Roman Mc15, and it averages about four out of five. Yeah, that might be one I could uh, pour for a sample and we could taste together. I haven't done it yet. But. X bourbon and X sherry. Definitely, yeah. Is it the, It's the new 43% um, mm-hmm, 15 mm-hmm. year. Mm-hmm. I, I think it's worth a, a try because it looks like it does fairly well. And I've, I have I need to get my own bottle at some point, but I would definitely be love to try it beforehand if you already have a bottle of that. I'm sure I could figure it out. That's, uh, that's awesome. Have you thought about what you might want to do uh, next week off the top of your head? Good question. So, um, Maybe we can put it out to our uh, yeah. friends in the chat. So just to give you guys a rundown, we've uh, Telex and I have both shared four samples with each other. So um, as we mentioned earlier in the show and over the last couple weeks, we're going to be tasting a, a whiskey together uh, uh, each week, which is something that we weren't doing before because of COVID and all that. Let me find real quick what our list was bro um good point because yeah i lost that let me bring it so up. we've done the aaron 21 and we've done the now the ball blair 25 the uh oh here we go so here are the whiskeys that we have and uh feel free to jump in the chat and speak up if one of these uh is what you think you and uh tell it's and i should Joint taste next week. We have Ardbeg Blasda, Balvany 12 year old single barrel, Lafroig 12 year old uh, uh, cast strength single cast from High Grove, Port Charlotte MRC01, Ardbeg Supernova 2008, and the uh, Elisa Bay 1.2 Sweet Smoke. So those are the bottles that we have. <laughs> no GOT bottles. Hey, I already, I already, I already completed the series, Stephen, tonight just for you. I, I ended it with the car, the car do, and that's a that's a science still deliver done. Thankfully, deal. <laughs> yeah. So just to repeat, these are the these are the samples that Telex and I still have in hand that we have not reviewed yet. Uh, Ardbeg Supernova 2008, Ardbeg Blaza, Elisa Bay 1.2 Sweet Smoke. Ball, uh, Balvenie 12 year old single barrel, uh, Lafroig single cast 12 year old high grove, uh, is the bottler independent, 
and Port Charlotte MRC01. So I'm seeing a lot of, uh, I'm seeing some love for the Yeah, uh, that, and that's cool with me. I've never had a high grove. I'd, and it's funny that you mentioned it. I did see a certain business selling high grove uh, bottles. And uh, that's a nice, is that a, is that wooden box? Yep, this is what it comes in. And wow. that is what the bottle looks like. I'm surprised they gave you an actual box. That's a good sign. Has anyone had any High Grove? Um... Yeah, my understanding is High Grove. So this is a, yeah, it's a, almost a 13-year, 46% single barrel. So 46% 12-year-old uh, single cask Laphroaig. Seeing a lot of love for this. Maybe this should be the one next week. It sounds uh, good to me. Uh, has anyone had a high grove bottle and either liked it or disliked it? I'm just curious if anyone's tried a high grove before because they are prevalent on certain markets overseas. I've noticed they sell a lot. You know I think they're like literally just a shop in the UK that buys a couple of barrels of Lafroy each year and is allowed to sell them. And uh, we might have the opportunity to try it. So, uh, looking at the do a trooper, trooper and Andrew Page are both saying the Lafroy. Stephen Connor says Art Beg. Juan coming in with the Lafroy Trooper with the Lafroy. Yeah. Let's do the um, Lafroy. <laughs> what was the second art bag? Didn't recognize the name. Yeah, the second art bag was the Blasda. Yeah, that's the unpeat. Well, it's slightly peated. It's it's the it's the most minimal peated art bag there is outside of the 1980 Kildalton release. The 2004, I want to say 2000, no, 2007 Kildalton release. Uh, with the big box was peated, but they had an old school 1980 release. Was the only art bag that was always unpeated. The only clothing close to that is the Blasto, which is at three to four ppm. Which it's like is a Bruna, it's like a, a Bruna Haven release. It really <laughs> is. It's. It, I think you'll. I think you'll like the profile, but it's so different and not like any other art bag that I've ever had. I'm. I'm curious to see what you'll think of it because. I'm not saying it's bad, and I'm not saying it's outstanding, but Page. it's in the it's 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 in the middle. It's not like a bone war. No, this has got a very nice mouthfeel. It is a lower ABV, but it's a very nice mouthfeel, and it's got some nice characteristics to it. So it's it, it, it's one to to definitely analyze and take your time with. I think it's worth it, but uh, definitely not like uh, thankfully a bow more. <laughs> yeah. It looks like we've had a good amount of votes in for the Lafroy, and then uh, maybe the week after we do the Supernova. That sounds good. Yeah, that's a special, 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 crazy special bottle. That yeah, I'm, uh, I'm very much looking forward to that. I couldn't and believe I ran into it. Supernova vote. So we got three for the Lafroy, two for the Supernova. Yeah, I think it's worth doing the. Well, let's go ahead and do the 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 Lafroy first, and then the Supernova the, the, after that. Unless you've got something that that you want to do in between those two, we could do because I know you've got some stuff coming too. So that's yeah. No, I think that's good. I think maybe maybe next week we do the. Well, I know that you and I were talking about doing the Karchis when we both have the bottles in hand. Um, that, that 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 might supersede something if when we do get it because I would like to jump on that review when we get it. Yeah, chance. definitely. Maybe we do. So maybe we, yeah, we'll consider. Uh, ben Ben Demon Hunter's got the Supernova. Maybe we do the Supernova next week, and then the week after we do the Carchis, and then maybe we do the Carchis and the twelve year old High Grove the same day, or we could know, something like that. We could we could. We could consider, uh, but the the Lafroig single cast twelve and the Supernova look like to be the ones that getting the most attention. That sounds good to me. I'm I like it all. <laughs> Thankfully, you and I have pretty good taste. <laughs> Thankfully, you and I have pretty good taste. So. Oh yeah, this has been a lot of fun, man. This is week two of doing uh, joint uh, tastings, and uh, yeah, I you have a little bit of that ball bear left. I hope you get to enjoy the rest of that. Man. I I enjoyed it already. <laughs> I enjoyed the full amount already. Uh, it didn't last long. I did pour like half of it, and then after I realized how great the nose was, I had to pour a little more already to get more of that nose. And of course, it has to go to the belly pretty quick after that. Indeed, so. man. Indeed. I see some folks that are uh, joining us late. If you're uh, if you're interested, in, we did a little earlier in the show. You can catch the playback. Uh, we we 
talked about the ball player 1990 second release 25 year old single malt scotch and it was it's a winner glorious. it's a winner and also on the side, if you want to take a look at that Cardew Gold Reserve review, I've got a short review. Oh, yeah. The Cardew Gold Reserve. You did the short review tonight, right? Yeah. And uh, did you do it? You, you, re you recently released a review um, either a well, day or two. Um, I have been doing a lot of like bourbon stuff as of late. So I, I just reviewed the E.H. Taylor single barrel bourbon um, coming up Friday on my channel. I'm doing a review of the brand new Wild Turkey barrel proof rare breed rye and then i'm also doing the rare breed bourbon so it's going to be a two whiskeys in one review that'll drop friday uh, nice. and then uh yeah i'll be uh jumping into probably the new elijah craig the week after that so two so, bourbons on the horizon sounds good to me i i can't uh i can't wait now I, I, i'll uh definitely be looking forward to getting some notes from someone else on this glasgow show on the side maybe uh <laughs> if i can get it out i'll uh see if i can uh get it out and uh and get some uh, feedback hopefully if, if not next week the week after that maybe if we're lucky <laughs> Yeah, well, I might even, I might even I invite them on the channel, maybe on the tail end of the channel after we do a couple there of reviews, go. maybe toward the end of the show, I might want to see if they come on and give us some uh, some live notes. Maybe I can talk them into like waiting. More opinions, the better. But uh, yeah, Popping it's it open live with us. so far, and I appreciate you uh, diving into this very odd release and uh, sharing your notes. I think uh, from any of the folks here who joined my happy hour, they uh, definitely enjoyed uh, hearing that second opinion, so that was a lot of fun. <laughs> well, hopefully, get him a third one just to make sure we're not all. Yeah, man. Lines. Yeah, totally, totally. Because <laughs> it is, it is interesting, and, and and it's funny. I wouldn't give this person a taste of it unless I thought it was pretty good, and it is still, like I said, without the cloudiness and the weird note. It's a four star right. dream. It's it's really yeah, hard. man. <laughs> totally agree. Like. There's good whiskey in there. <laughs> like I said, I'm going to try and put a pull a mashup together over the last few months of me tasting that because I feel like I keep saying that. I'm like, man, there's some good whiskey in there. <laughs> yeah, it's, 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 it makes me wonder what what went wrong and where did it go wrong? That's that's the really the magic question of the whole thing. That, but is, that is the mystery. If Glen Scotia doesn't quite know, then it's probably, like you said, something between them and this secondary uh, – reseller but thankfully yeah let's go shit nine 99 out of 100 times you buy a bottle you're not going to get that kind of thing thank oh yeah totally, totally yeah i completely agree with you i completely agree well i guess we'll wrap it up for now and uh i can't wait to, already till next tuesday man <laughs> I'm, I'm like i'm already counting the <laughs> counting the minutes to oh, open up another bottle and have a fun, but I'm looking forward. I guess we'll start, like you said, we'll, do you want to start with the, which one was it again? The, the high Grove or the supernova? Yeah, it was about neck and neck. Um, why don't we uh, discuss it over email and uh, we'll make the call and I'll know, I'll know in a few days more how long it'll be before my new car just comes in. So maybe we can figure it out. Yeah, that's that. That that could. Either be way, we're gonna review both of them eventually, and uh, both of yeah. them are fun. So, sounds that's good. That's for sure. Thanks so much, everybody, for stopping by. I really, really appreciate it. Please subscribe to both of us if you haven't already. We we use that to gauge how well we're doing or how bad we're doing. So give us a subscription and and a, and a thumbs up if you don't mind before you go. I appreciate it. Sounds good, brother. Be well. Take care, everybody. You too. Wear a mask. <laughs> See you later. Sure.